Hi, this is Rob Leo, and in this brief tutorial, we're going to continue to look at Google Docs. Let me just open up a new tab on the browser, go to the waffle, back to Google Drive. Uh, you previously saw me upload a Word document and convert it. You also saw, okay, we got it. You also saw me uh, create a Google Doc from scratch. Uh, I've changed that document slightly. We're going to open up that demo doc and continue to make some edits. Uh, in this case, I've been talking about the Mongols, pretend I'm writing a report. Um, we looked at some of the editing tools, we looked at some of the share features, we looked at some of the commenting tools. Uh, if you notice, you can also make a copy of a document. So if you want to use one as a template, uh, you could simply click make a copy. You could give it a new name, tell it where to go. A new tab will automatically open up with a second version. So if you have documents you want to keep as a template and make different versions of them, uh, you could certainly do that. Of course, Google Classroom will distribute these seamlessly to your students. Uh, you wouldn't have to use the Make a Copy tool. You could also set the document's language. So uh, in terms of spell checking and so forth, you could see uh, how documents um, how documents stack up in terms of what language you set the document to. You could download the document as a Word document, PDF, plain text, rich text, etc. all sorts of different options and pull it off of the cloud. It'll still remain on your Google account, but you can pull a version off of the cloud and download it and save it to your computer. Uh, you can also uh, deal with your page setup. So if you want to adjust the margins, if you want to go from portrait to landscape, you can do that all right here from the file menu. Uh, again, so uh, sharing stuff, creating new stuff, opening stuff, trashing stuff, revision history, as we already saw. Um, what I want to look at next are some of the other tools that you may not be as familiar with. Um, for example, um, one of the things you can do with a, with a Google Doc is research. So I'm going to highlight, uh, actually, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the document. There's an explore icon here. And let's say students are doing a report and they want to do some research. Google already kind of knows what topics you're doing because you type them into your, into your document. Let's say I want to look up the Mongols for information. Um, if I scroll through, you can see a bunch of web results that are affiliated with that. If you prefer, you can look for MLA, APA, or Chicago-style citations if you need to cite a place where you were doing research. So let's say, for example, that um, I'm looking at uh, historyworld.net. <clears throat> and in this case, if I click the citation icon, it will put a footnote. Let's pretend I got this information from historyworld.net. A new tab will open up and I can do my research and maybe I paraphrase a little bit. Um, that footnote will then appear at the bottom of the screen. And as we saw at the top of the page under web results, you could change that to APA style if you prefer. And now when I reference something, let's see, I get this from uh, East Asia at columbia.edu and I cite it, it will be a... Um, APA style footnote instead of an MLA style footnote. These are not foolproof. Of course, students should continue to, to uh, use your uh, guidance in how to do appropriate citations for their documents, but it is certainly a handy tool for students as they're doing research. You can also do the same for images. Let's say you want to add an image to your document. Notice if you hover the mouse, you can click on the plus sign and that image will automatically be inserted into your document so that you can reference it. Of course, you'd want to make sure that you reference where this document came from and cite it appropriately on a works cited or reference page. Um, in addition to the Explore tool, you can just close this. Again, Explore is located with this kind of compass icon on the bottom of the screen. You also have some various tools at your disposal. So for example, if you wanted to check spelling, I didn't make any spelling errors, no suggestions to make, but let's say I misspell something, you could uh, see that it's squiggled underneath. If I right click on this, it's going to give a suggestion for me. Did I mean misspell? I did. And it will automatically change it for me. Of course, you could always go to the tools menu and do a spelling uh, there as well. If you need words defined, for example, uh, if I want to define the word warrior, I can go to tools and click define and I could search the dictionary the word warrior and I could uh, see that information come up. I thought you could just highlight, but apparently not. Uh, other tools, it does a word count. You can even use voice typing. So if I click voice typing, all I have to do is click the uh, microphone to activate it. I'm going to give my uh, computer access to my mic. I am now typing text into this document, period. click the microphone to stop it, but I highlighted the word warrior. That's why it's appearing here. Um, let me just move the cursor and try that again. You can use the voice typing tool 
to add text to your document, period. Isn't that a great feature, question mark? How fun, exclamation point. New line. Wow, that's pretty powerful, exclamation point. This is only as good as your diction. Um, so, you know, you can kind of dictate uh, not only the words, but also the, uh, the punctuation marks and so forth that you want it to do. Great for kids who struggle with keyboards. Um, if you use Google Keep, you can take notes and insert those directly. You can even translate a document. So, for example, it'll make a new version, translated copy of, and you can choose the language. So let's say I want to insert uh, or change this into Spanish, for example. Uh, foreign language teachers will spot this a mile away because it does not translate idioms well. Um, but let me just scroll down to Spanish and translate. Again, new tab opens, completely new version, doesn't affect your first version, but uh, even the accents and so forth are included. Uh, you even get the punctuation with the upside down question mark and the regular question mark. But this is a new version of the document. It appears in your docs, uh, translated copy of the demo doc. Pretty cool stuff. Again, foreign language teachers will spot that a mile away. Um, let me just pause for just a moment. So if you don't really want to use the translate tool, you can still get to all those accented letters. Notice there's an add-ons menu. If I click add-ons, I can get add-ons. Think of these as little uh, utilities that will help make your documents better. One of the ones I like to use is called Easy Accents. And uh, I would recommend you do a Google search for the best Google Docs add-ons for teachers. And that will kind of pull up a, a list someone has created. I'm always a sucker for a list. I've, cr I've added the add-on to Google Docs. So every time I go to Google Docs, this add-on will be available to my account. When I return, there's Easy Accents. And if I slide over to Easy Accents Start, it'll pull up a little menu on the top or the right-hand side of the screen. And if I want to uh, select a language, again, I'm going to pick on Spanish. It will basically put a virtual keyboard on the screen. So as I'm typing manually... Close my voice typing out here. I'm going to do the upside down question mark and say, uh, I, it's kind of awkward because you have to go between keyboard and clicking. I'm just going to type in uh, Dios Mio. You have to manually do this by switching between the virtual keyboard that they offer you and uh, typing text on your keyboard. But you can certainly add uh, different accents and so forth from a variety of languages. Other add-ons you might want to consider. Um, to get more, you just click Get Add-ons. You might like the EasyBib one. Um, I like I like one that has all sorts of fonts. So I'm just going to type fonts as a search term. And uh, Extensus Fonts is a great one. You click Free. It adds it to your account. And again, it's available every time you use that account. You just sometimes have to give it permission to do what it's supposed to do. It'll tell you it's working. And again, when you return to the add-ons menu, there is extensive fonts. And when you start it on the right-hand side of your screen, you get all sorts of fonts to choose from. Half the fun is scrolling through and finding one you like. One more for the math teachers. I am baffled as to how this works. But GMath is, from my understanding, a powerful add-on for creating equations or even handwriting uh, equations into your document and putting them in as pictures. So again, once you've added it, you return to the add-ons menu. There's GMath. You can create expressions, create graphs, statistical displays, or even create a handwriting entry. I don't know how this editor works as a social studies teacher, um, but I would just go through the process of identifying myself as a teacher. Um, I could type in my information knows where we are. And let's say I teach uh, 10th grade. When I submit this, I've satisfied the requirements. And in a moment, you should see uh, the, the latex editor. Um, again, it's giving you a little tutorial, building your own equations. I wish I knew how this worked, but um, for the most part, math teachers, I would assume you know how to create equations, whether they're simple or advanced. Um, anyway, uh, just to recap, we looked at some of the tools, we looked at um, what's there in the file menu, and we looked at some of the add-ons. Feel free to pause, rewind, play again, and uh, hopefully this will help you master Google Docs. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found this useful.